right, folks, welcome back to McFarland's Corner, part two, the topic, post-spawn bass fishing. Um, real quick, before we do this, I, I left out one of the most important parts of the journal, um, and that is the Finesse Carolina rig. That was something that I've depended on since February. I have been using the full-size rig, which is a one-ounce weight, heavy line, and 20-pound leader. Um, with all this water rising and dropping, I have found that when those fish get finicky, um, the bite is really, really odd. Um, you can't distinguish it. You have to find it. You have to discover the mush. You have to go slow enough to let the fish show himself. Um, and the discovery is just a, 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 it's a job in itself. When you do, you realize you're getting bit. You get bit a lot. Okay. Um, so they can be caught when that water's dropping. But here's what we're doing. Basically, I go down to a half ounce egg sinker. That's hard to hold. It's so little. Okay. A little bead. A swivel. If you will tie, if you will put your little bobber stopper right there, that's in between. So you're going to have the weight, the bead, the bobber stopper. It really protects your knot. The bead itself will not protect your knot the way that I fish this. Okay. So you need that bobber stopper to protect the knot. And then 12 pound liter, three odd hook with the impact shad, um, three or four different colors, shad colors, green pumpkin colors. I've talked about it, some of the other stuff. So you should know that. Um, the key is that this is a finesse rig. So it's 15 pound mainline, 12 pound leader, which lets it have a lot more lifelike. And I snap it. So pretend it's a jerk bait. Uh, pretend it's a popper. Lean in on it, ease in on it. Do you see anything there? Hold, is there a fish there? Does he show himself? No, slide it an inch. No, nothing's there. Snap, snap. This is, again, discovery, discovery, discovery. Is he there? Expect it there. Is he there? Ease into it. Don't just pull it. But that was probably the number one thing I left out in the journal. Best bite of all. We catch the most fish doing that. And that's really how all the big fish that we have had in the boat have been still caught off of those shell beds. Carolina rig and the finesse Carolina rig. Let's get to the topic, all right? Post-spawn bass. What does that mean? What is a post-spawn bass? So most of you know what that is. Um, to those of you that don't, um, I'm grateful that you're watching. Hopefully you're learning a lot, and um, we're going to tell you. Um, spring, the fish moves into the shallows, digs nests, lays eggs. And when the female's done laying eggs, and I mean the minute she's done with those eggs, she moves out. In cool weather like we're having, in flooding conditions like we're having, they don't sometimes move very far at all. Maybe 20 yards, just back to the, back to that stump that she posts spawn on, back to the creek, back to some of them trees out there in the middle to suspend and recover and rest in, back to grass edges, secondary points. If it's cool weather, she doesn't have to go find cool water. Um, those shell beds that I like to fish are the cooler grounds. That shell in the deeper water can act like a tile floor, okay, tile floor to a dog. They don't need that yet. We've had flooding conditions, cool, cool weather, uh, very, very unusual weather for May. I think we had the lowest high ever in the history just last week. Um, so a lot of those post-spawn fish, post-spawn bass is a finished bass. She's finished. The female's done. She moves back out. And now she's ready to recover and go back to living life normal, which is survival and food. Eat. Survive and eat. Eat to survive, however you want to call it. The reproduction is off the mind. The male now will stay in and guard those eggs. It can take three to seven days, depending on sunshine and weather, for those eggs to hatch. The male can simply guard for sometimes another 10 days. I've seen males be in the same area where they were for two to three more weeks. That poor male is tore up. He went in a week or two before the female. The female came and joined him. He sat and guarded for two, three more weeks, spinning that shallow water for five, six weeks, okay? He's hungry. He does eat things while he's in there, um, but mostly chases it off in defense, okay? So it's a defensive territorial bite you're looking for. Um, so that is what the spawn is. When that male and those fry are ready to be on their own, that male comes back out post-spawn as well. That's the best part about post-spawn for me is, is you have a congregation of females that regroup with the males still staying in. So this is a separation for the time being. This is a separation of the big females. And of course on Fort, we got the big males, but it separates those fish. So that's where I like it. If it's hot and it's coming, if it's stable, they start driving out shore. They start going back to the main lake points, shallow deep, they're shallow and deep trees. 
deep shell beds, shallow shell beds, 12 to 14 foot. Um, they really start to group up and they're coming for the same reason, to have recovery food. Um, so some of the, you know, that's where they're going to go to. If it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, they move more and more offshore and get out of that hot water. The bigger the female, the more comfort she wants. She's going to have shallow water next to deep water. So that's why some of these humps and things are important. Some of these ridges are very important. Um, or trees, live in trees near a shell bed. So they live in the tree during the day, but feed on the shell bed, a bedroom and a kitchen, a bedroom and a kitchen. And timing now becomes part of the game. Um, but basically, that's what the spawn is. And I think I've kind of summed up what the fish do. Okay. Hotter it gets, the more they started coming back out. The most important thing that draws them back out, um, in my opinion here for four, is they tend to hold inside due to cooler temperatures and the shad spawn. Our thread fin shad spawn is going on right at that same time. And so, shoot, they just back right up and take advantage of that. Um, that's what the elites took advantage of. Most of Brandon Cobb, what I believe he, he made the statement, I think he's fishing the shad spawn. Um, so his heavy sacks came from grinding, throwing the right baits, and getting a handful of bites for the big bites. Um, and I believe he caught a lot of fish along the way. The jerk bait and things caught the incredible fisherman in the first place. Attacked the lake. Didn't go fishing. Attacked the lake. Um, absolutely amazing. But I think I've kind of summed up what they do and why. Um, there's a lot of places right now where those females aren't even thinking about coming out. The weather's too nice. The water's too comfortable. It's cool enough where they are. They're staying right where they are. I've seen them go back in and even eat some of their own fry. Um, you know, another cool thing that I've watched them do that's awesome is the brim really give them a hard time during the spawn. Well, if it stays like this, those females will sit right in there and give the brim revenge. Um, they, they'll stay right there. And boy, them poor brim are getting gobbled up. Break out your, uh, break out your evergreen chatterbait and the, the bee height delight and uh, put an LFT uh, green pumpkin on it. Chartreuse tail wash what happened this time of year. Back on that chatterbait bite, buddy. Um, telling you. So. That's where we're going next. Uh, some of the best ways to catch those fish. Well, the brim spawn is really good with this year. Um, the brim spawn revenge. That's a great approach this year with the cooler temperatures. Those big bass are staying shallow. Um, and those big bass want big food. Okay, so you're going to see a lot more topwater action this year uh, as we before we get the offshore stuff. So your topwaters, your frogs, Anything to do with the brim spawn, uh, big spinnerbait brim color, chatterbait brim color, swim jigs, swim jigs in the shallow water brim colors right now. That's a coming bite. Could be awesome. I'm just kind of clicking myself. Probably going to be throwing some swim jigs this week. Uh, any of the buddy fishing with us this week. Um, remind me, but you may not have to. Um, so uh, larger baits, even swim baits still. Um, anybody throw a 316 bluegill right now, um, same thing. But that's, again, the bass revenge bite. Um, crankbait still catching fish. Still can't catch them. Catch those big schooled up offshore. The, Got to get hot and get them gang banged up shore, offshore. Uh, Keith Combs is probably nobody any better at that. And he hung well. Um, there wasn't enough fish for him to win. Um, had there been enough fish, he would have been the man to beat, aside from Lee Livesey. Um, so everything was moderation there was some of this and some of that and some of this and some of that and there still is right now um but the post spawn deal is female moves in dumps them eggs within seven to ten days she's recovered and she's back to eating and it's my favorite time you can catch them a whole lot of different ways um if you have any questions about that post spawn um please put them below and i'll do my best to answer those my favorite way is a jig all right, um, a jig, a big worm, and steal them Carolina rigs. I change the baits off the Carolina rigs. I get into off of the shad, off of the fish patterns, and I get into creatures and worms, big creatures, the, the brush hog, the full hog, the super hog. I get into the 10-inch, 12-inch power worms. Um, I get into large jigs with the lobster trail on it instead of you know, a 5-inch profile jig instead of a 3.5, 4-inch profile jig. Um, love the big worm bite, the shaky head bite. Uh, this year we're going to do something really cool. Uh, come from the West Coast, definitely drop shotted for years and years. Had it perfected to the best of my abilities on the West Coast. Haven't done much of it here. Um, and probably won't still do a whole lot of regular drop shotting. Smaller line, smaller baits. Not saying you can't catch a big one because you do. But I'm going to really push the bub shotting this year. 
I got some special stuff this year. Um, I've got some special half ounce drop shot weights made from uh, Arizona Lead Works, and uh, I'm going to do some special things for a bigger bite, big big baits only. We're going to drop shot big baits, big worms, big creature baits, nose hook some big uh, uh, shad profile baits. It's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens in these deep shell beds, post spawn deep shell beds. Um, so, guys, I appreciate you. Uh, Watching the show, I hope you enjoyed part one in the journal. Um, part two, the uh, the lesson is pretty simple. Um, so there's not a real in-depth deal. If you need more from me, I can certainly try and dig some more up. If you need that, just ask below or message. Um, I'll give you a couple things before I close you out for the night. A tip of the week. You know, I see, I see a lot of guys just throw plastic on the ground, back in the water. Use plastic is what I'm talking about. And, um, you know, this impact shad, for example, it tears pretty easy. Um, and within a fish or two, you, you're you struggling to put that hook back in it. Um, it usually will tear, you know, right there inside where you try and set the hook. And it most definitely tears up here in the nose. Uh, becomes unusable. Um, I can tell you that, you know, if you just fish every now and then and you're only using a handful of them, it doesn't make any sense to try and repair and save them. So, please, I ask you at least just put them in a bag and put them in the garbage. Um, they don't do no good on shore. Birds try and eat them. Um, in the water, it's worse. They swell up. They get huge. Fish do eat them, get stuck in their digestive system. It's not good. So first of all, if you don't use enough of it that you think it's worth to try and savor them, just get them in the garbage. I can tell you that I've gone through a couple hundred of these in a month on the fork. It makes sense to me as a guide to try and repair some of them. So what I do is I use Mend It. Mend It's real simple to use. If you'll use this little mended jar, buy this mended jar, it's got a brush. It's got a little brush handle on it, okay? It's really easy. I usually will take a smaller bottle with a little needle. Um, this is an oil bottle. It's got a small, squeezable deep bottle with a little needle on it. And I'll put a little bit of mended in this. That way I can take the brush. I lay the bait down on paper towel, and I actually will brush repair the inside. Okay, open it up, get it in there, soak it, let it remelt. Okay, once that's cured, then I take the needle part, I inject the needle part into that hole that was made and squeeze and release fluid into the hole, which fixes the head. Now, again, if you're a guide like myself and you're going through hundreds of them, it makes sense to save them. I can tell you once they're fixed, they work even better. The, the head's a little more firm and the place we've been put the hook's a little more firm than it was in the first place. Um, so I did literally over a hundred fix. I fixed over a hundred in half an hour the other night. Um, so not only is that economically important to a guy like me, if I do that with my commodity baits like lizards and and certain things that I go through volume, um, it makes sense to use the mended. Um, so that's really important. That's a tip of the week. Okay, uh, product of the week, company of the week. Big shout out to Louis Vaughn and Real Time Rods. Real Time Rods, guys. Custom rod builder around here, uh, reel repair, rod repair, brand new uh, fishing reel rod orders if you do need. Um, but man, the guy has always done me right, done people right, um, right from the square beginning. Um, thank you, Ron. And um, I, I just am so grateful that I just got a bunch of new stuff. So I decided to stay with Real Time Rods, and I'm going to be there for as long as I plan the guy, and as long as he keeps making rods, I'm going to stay right there. Um, I have myself some new rods made, first of all. Um, so we added a few rods to the collection. Um, this right here is a FS 7 foot, 7 foot 8, so it's long rod. It's a big, powerful long rod. It's a 1225. Um, we're going to be using this for jigs. We're going to be using this for the shaky heads. We're going to be using this um, for that. Bubba shot, about half ounce drop shot weight within 10 and 12 inch worms. Um, there's a little secret to that that we're going to tell you about in the future. Um, but I also added a whole bunch of new reels. I'm switching to Daiwa, been with Shimano all my life. I really found the past couple of years that the Daiwa product is outstanding, uh, less maintenance, less repair. Um, I'm really, really happy. Um, friend of mine, Brent Ayler, had, uses nothing but the Tatula. And so that's what we did. We're all Tatula on the McFarland fishing boat right now with some brand new Bushido real-time rods. Um, thank you so much to Louis Vaughn, real-time rods. Um, guys, remember too, by the way, the magic reaction, 
That's the sauce that you soak your plastics in. Night and day difference, 10 to 1 difference, okay? Even with the impact shad, the soaks that I soak get bit more, held more than the ones that I don't, all right? This, the real magic is incredible. We got two bottle sizes now, um, a, a small bottle, a big bottle. Um, one ounce treats about, I think, 20 bags of baits, um, and it is no oil. It, it impregnates into the plastic, and I'm telling you, ask the guys that are using it. You will guarantee to see the difference, okay? Um, so, again, they're really kudos to Real-Time Rods, Louis Vaughn. There's really no better rod reel service right here on Lightfall. All right? Ah, it's kind of concluding the show. Don't forget about the daily rundown. I'm going to try every night when I get home from fishing to just give you a quick daily rundown, which kind of lessens what the journal is, um, but will be more detailed in each week's journal. Um, it'll be a quick rundown. Some of you that are coming to the lake, at least you can find out what we've been doing, what's working, and I'll include what's not. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be doing the daily rundown. That's going to be on YouTube and my business fake Facebook page, which is the Lake Fork Adventures Guide Service. Um, don't forget about the Twilight Specials. They're completely full for May. Uh, I, I think there might be one day open for a Twilight in May, but they're full. Uh, May 23rd is open for a full day adventure if anybody is interested. And the bite's really starting to get tuned up. Um, June, half, half of June is already full. Um, the front half. Um, if you're looking to spend a day with me, the second half is open. And, and I, I don't normally say this, but you need to move because that bite... It's my best bite. Look at the history. Look at the pictures. The next eight months, eight weeks, we're going to catch them. We're going to catch them deep. It's where I came from. It's my roots. And um, we're going to find them, and we're going to catch them. I'm looking forward to it. So if you want to get out with me, get a call in on those June dates. They're filling up, and there's only already the second, only the second half open. Man, I appreciate you all so much. This is really fun. Um, sometimes I feel like I go so darn fast, um, and that's my nature. Um, very hyperactive, full of energy. Um, but also sometimes I'm trying to compile this so it's just, it's not too long um, and it doesn't take forever to upload. So please understand that. I, I really kind of drive this because the uploading, the longer my video is, the worse the upload is out here in the woods. And uh, maybe some AT&T technician or special owner or something will watch this someday and say he's going to do something about it. That'd be pretty cool. Anyways, enough of that. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. If you have any questions, you have any ideas for a future topic that you'd like me to talk about, um, if you want to share your pictures, you want to share a story with me, maybe I'll share it out here online. Um, I, I would certainly be up to that. Please give me the likes below, any comments below. Thanks again for watching. And uh, I'm Mike McFarland with McFarland Fishing and the Lake Fork Fishing Guide.